Chairman Graham, Ranking Member Whitehouse, and Committee members, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today to address the very important issue of medical marijuana. Humans have used marijuana as a medicine for at least 5,000 years. Under the scientific name of cannabis, marijuana was added to the pharmacopoeias of Europe and the United States in the 1840s. It was recommended to alleviate pain, stimulate appetite, suppress nausea, and treat opiate withdrawal. All medical marijuana use came abruptly to an end in 1937 when the Marijuana Tax Act effectively banned it. At the time, we knew close to nothing about marijuana. What do we know now? Well, first of all, we know that the chemical composition of marijuana is complex, as you have heard. But we also know that two chemicals take the lion's shares of its pharmacology. And those are tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, and cannabidiol. THC is the main reason why people use marijuana recreationally and is also responsible for many, but not all, of its potential useful effects. How does THC work? Research in the past 30 years has provided a firm answer to this question, revealing the existence of a previously unsuspected signaling system that serves crucial functions in the brain and actually throughout the body. This system is called the endogenous cannabinoid system or endocannabinoid system my lab at UC Irvine has had the privilege to study this uh, for over 25 years. At the core of the endocannabinoid system are the cannabinoid receptors. These proteins recognize THC just like a lock recognizes its own key. They're found on cells in the brain and other organs and mediate the pharmacological effects of THC. The other crucial component of the endocannabinoid system are the endocannabinoids, chemical transmitters, made in our body that, like THC, are recognized by cannabinoid receptors. The endocannabinoids are the legitimate key for the cannabinoid receptor lock, which THC observes. So why do we have a cannabinoid system? Well, let me assure you, endocannabinoids are not there to get us high. Research has shown that the system requires, regulates essential bodily function. For example, it controls pain. It makes us more resilient in the face of psychological stress, allaying anxiety and improving mood. It strengthens our response to a vast array of stimuli that we found, find pleasurable, from Twinkies to cocaine. It finally tunes our ability to learn and retain new information. So what does this new knowledge teach us about the potential utility of cannabis as a medicine? Well, first, it provides us a strong scientific ground on which we can base possible medical uses. Most prominent, in my opinion, is chronic pain, a life-shattering condition that afflicts millions of Americans and costs billions of dollars to our economy. Opiate medications are effective at reducing chronic pain, but they are addictive, and their excessive use has created an epidemic that kills more people than car accidents do. Clinical studies suggest that marijuana can alleviate chronic pain at dosages that cause only modest side effects. But we need more research to confirm these results and understand better the value of marijuana as an analgesic. Beside chronic pain, other possible indications for medical marijuana, which are supported by our knowledge of the endocannabinoid system, include post-traumatic stress disorder, nausea and vomiting, for example, caused by anti-cancer drugs, and inflammatory bowel disease. But also in those cases, more research is needed to confirm real benefits. Our understanding of the cannabinoid system can also guide us in assessing the risks that are inevitably associated with the medicinal use of marijuana like any other drug. An important concern with acute marijuana use is the negative impact the drug can have on memory. Maybe it doesn't matter very much if you forget what you had for lunch last night, uh, for dinner last night, but what about forgetting stuff while you're driving a car? Automobile driving is a challenging cognitive task and we still do not fully understand how marijuana affects it. A serious potential side effect of prolonged marijuana use is addiction. Marijuana is less addictive than opiate painkillers are, but is an addictive substance. And we do not know how the addictive properties of marijuana play out when the drug is combined with opioids as it would happen if it became a medicinal compound. But at present, a most pressing concern I see with medical marijuana is its potential long-term impact on the adolescent brain. The adolescent brain is still very much in development, and so is the endocannabinoid system inside it. 
Overstimulation by marijuana might interfere with the normal development of the system and with brain development. And the persistent consequences that we might uh, end up having are not understood. So one objective of a large uh, human study funded by NIDA called ABCD is to bring light to this question and our lab is working with NIDA to put together a research program that would look deeply into the same issue at the mechanistic level. In closing, I must briefly consider the second most important chemical constituent of marijuana, cannabidiol, which is of course, as you have heard, the main constituent of Charlotte's Web. There is a lot of confusion about this molecule, even in the medical profession. Here are some facts on which scientists agree and some open questions for, uh, that we all ask. First, unlike, CBD, unlike THC, CBD does not recognize cannabinoid receptors. As a result, it does not have mind-altering effects and does not have addictive effects. Second, CBD exerts interesting pharmacological effects that include the ability to alleviate psychotic symptoms in people with schizophrenia, reduce anxiety, control seizures in some forms of epilepsy, as we heard before, and suppress skin acne. The receptor mechanism by which CBD brings about these disparate effects is unknown. Now, lastly, but importantly, while CBD appears to be relatively safe after short-term administration, its long-term effects remain undetermined. So in light of the promising therapeutic potential of CBD, it will be important to address these questions in future research. Thank you.